This is Late Night Health. This is the radio show that cares about the most important part of your life, your health. During the next hour, the insane Daryl Wayne and I are going to take a look at some issues that touch each and every one of us. We're going to start our show in just a couple of moments with a new friend. He is uh, revolutionizing science education. We'll find out more about that and why it's important, not only for the health of students, but for the health of our country. Uh, We'll also spend some time taking a look at some new products from a company that's uh, specializing in developing products for those over 50 and for those who have Alzheimer's and other dementia issues. And we'll wrap up today with a conversation with Robert Clancy. All that and more coming up on this edition of Late Night Health. We go to uh, Silver Spring, Maryland. And uh, Daryl, please feel free to jump in because I'd love to know how you did in science in high school. Uh, (laughs) I know how I did. I I faked it. I really did. uh, our guest is Dr. Sheldon Margolis. Uh, uh, Dr. Margolis is not only a medical doctor, he's also an attorney. And he has a, uh, a website called Fascinating Education. Uh, Sheldon, uh, welcome to Late Night Health. Thank you for asking me to be here. Uh, our pleasure. And I, I, we have to say that uh, I I was in Silver Spring a little over a week ago, and I went to a market, and a man standing next to me waiting started talking with me, and we hit it off, and that's this man, this doctor. I mean, you know, he went to medical school at Stanford. Um, I I guess later later in life, uh, Sheldon, you became an attorney. Right. I, it was an accident, actually. <laughs> but I, I, got, I was asked to uh, I was asked to evaluate a legal case, and I got so involved in it because I had just finished writing a book on the logic of medicine that the attorney I was working with said, "Why don't you just go to law school? You really like logic." And so I did. I got my bicycle out and I went back and forth between the medical school and law school, and uh, ended up three years later with a law degree. Wow. Did you ever, pra- have you, do you practice law or have you? I, I have. I've served mostly as an expert witness trying to evaluate what the damages, whether there was malpractice or not malpractice. Got it. Well, we're going to talk about education. Um, I, I told you the story that in, in high school, uh, I had trouble with chemistry. I also had trouble with biology. I couldn't tell a pancreas uh, from a kidney when we were dissecting frogs. I, I just couldn't. I, I don't know why I couldn't, but I couldn't. And uh, when I got to chemistry, oh boy, the math got me. And when I got into physics, I uh, transferred out of that class after a week. Taking a look at the need for science education, are we providing our students with quality education in the sciences? Uh, not a- I don't want to be a judge of how well they're doing. I, I just want to show ways that I think, based on what I know about the brain, and having taught about 2,500 medical students in my career and, and residence, uh, what I know about teaching. Uh, I do know that the national scores on standardized tests have remained stagnant for, I'd say, the last 10 years. And uh, things have not changed, and in, in some cases, they've actually worsened. So uh, I just thought I would throw my two cents in, and, and if it works, fine. If it uh, doesn't work, it's okay, too. Uh, I think I think I have an insight into how kids learn, um, and so that's what I'm doing. One of the things that interests me about this is that without good scores, without kids learning in high school, biology, physics, and other sciences, they're gonna. We're gonna fall behind. We as a country are gonna fall behind. Would that be accurate, in your opinion? I've I, I've literally said 
either we learn science or we learn Chinese. Once you make up your mind. So I, I, I fully agree with you. What is the way science is taught today versus fascinating education? Well, um, I think the main thing, the main difference is that I don't use a textbook. Um, I use narrated images that slowly evolve on the computer and explain, as the image evolves, explain what's happening. It's hard to do that with a textbook. Textbooks are kind of static. You know, the kids have to read it, which means they have to be good readers. And then they have to kind of shift their attention over to an image, which is static, and then back over to the, to the text. And uh, I don't think it's as efficient as narrated images. I remember in college, a professor, a college professor with a law degree, by the way, standing up at the front of the class and his lectures, he would just read chapter and verse. That's all he did. In fact, I'm thinking of another professor who did the same thing. And one was uh, screenwriting and the other was history. And they, they just read from a textbook. And I kept wondering why I was there. I couldn't understand why they didn't give lectures. One of the teachers became somewhat friendly with me and he would tell stories that excited me. He should have been doing that in the classroom, exciting the students. Can you make a comment on that? Well, what you're talking about is how you teach. And this is the other issue is what do you teach? And uh, the, the, the problem, with, I think, with, with, uh, with science education, one of the problems with science education, in my mind, is that students don't like science because they find it too hard, or at least they think it's just too hard and it's boring. And it's too hard because there's too much math, there's too much reading. And for them, science is just a bunch of memorization of facts, definitions, formulas, and there's just simply too many moving parts, and, and none of it makes sense. That's their image of science. And they also think it's boring because they think it's boring because it, they'll never use it. That's what that's what they think, unless of course they plan to, to pursue a career in science. But for most kids who are not going to do that, they think it, they'll never use it. So the thing is, how do you get kids interested in science in the first place? And then, what you're talking about is how do you make it easy to understand? And so, that's what fascinating education is all about, isn't it? Making it easy to understand. That, that is true. That is true, yes. Um, but also, I, I mean, the issue about how do you get kids interested in science, and one of the ways you get in, kids interested in science is to show you that science is not just memorization of facts, formulas, definitions. It's, it's a tool that I'm giving you that will allow you to pursue your own goals. And so you, this, whether you're going to be a chef or you're going to be a hair care specialist, or you want to work in metals, chemistry in particular. I, I'm a, I'm, I think we should start with that's a separate issue about what, which science to begin with, but chemistry will give you the tools and the knowledge to be better at whatever you decide you want to pursue. All right, let me ask a question of Daryl just before we go to our break. Yes, sir. Were you good in science in high school? I was average in everything in high school. I mean, I didn't really... I wasn't there, uh, you know, fighting to excel at any particular thing. Did you always want to go into radio, even in high school? I worked in professional radio for two and a half years in high school. Wow. All right. Well, that answers that. But today, Daryl's an engineer and understands all that stuff that is over my head. Um, our guest is Dr. Sheldon Margulies. Check him out at fascinatingeducation.com. That's fascinatingeducation.com. We're going to take some time out, do some business. We will return. Visit us at latenighthealth.com. That's latenighthealth.com. More coming up. Don't go away.
Late Night Health is proud of our partnership with the EBC, the Evolutionary Business Council. Check them out at ebcouncil.com. You're listening to Late Night Health with Mark Allen. The show continues in a moment. Recently, I met Jacqueline from Bright here in Los Angeles. She gave me a hearing exam and then showed me how to hear again with the new Signia Pure Series hearing aids, and she can give you your life back, too. I hear birds chirping, birds cooing, and even my wife. They easily connect to my smartphone. The Signia hearing aids are amazing, and with the charge and go, I don't have to fiddle with batteries and hear all day long. Not hearing is frustrating for you and your family. I know, you don't have a problem, but trust me, call Bright Here Now for a free hearing exam, a $125 value, yours free, just for making an appointment now. There are offices throughout the Los Angeles area. Call Bright Here Now at 323-424-7100. That's 323-424-7100 for a free hearing exam. There's no obligation. Call now, 323-424-7100, or visit them on the web at brighthere.com. If you're listening to Late Night Health right now, you're part of the growing target of baby boomers we're serving. Hi, I'm Daryl Wayne, producer of Late Night Health, inviting you to join the Late Night Health family. If you have any business targeting the growing boomer market, Late Night Health is the ideal advertising vehicle for you. From vitamins to insurance, alternative health to Western-style medicine, Late Night Health caters to the growing population of those over 40 years old. This vibrant demographic has expendable income to fight aging, purchase travel, take care of aging parents or just have fun find out about the advertising opportunities with late night health call us at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 or email us at info at late night health.com that's info at late night health.com join late night health as we empower people to take charge of their own health care call now at 805-391-0308 that's 805-391-0308 There's a lot of talk all over the internet about the remarkable benefits of Carbon 60, and baby boomers are especially excited about it. Greska's Carbon 60 is the premium Carbon 60, developed by an aerospace and NASA scientist. 95% of Greska's customers report positive results from this Nobel Prize winning technology in just four days. Imagine more energy, better health, and more vitality. It's very bioavailable to quickly mend toxin cripple cells. This is a super powerful antioxidant. Bob Greska is so confident that you'll love his Carbon 60, he wants to send you a bottle at 50% off the regular price to see how life-changing this will be for you. Call 720-600-6040. That's 720-600-6040. Visit c-60.com to learn more. Call 720-600-6040 now or visit c-60.com. Sometimes it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Words are a critical aspect of success. How you get your point across is a crucial part of what makes anything sell. So do it right and hire a writer. Whether it's articles, blog posts, technical writings, website content, product descriptions, or ghost writing anything from a novel to a nonfiction book about your navel, contact Servette Hassan. If you want it to sell, write it right. Email Servette at Servette at ServetteHassan.com. Late Night Health continues. I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. And uh, we're talking uh, we're talking about the brain. We're talking with uh, the creator of Fascinating Education, Dr. Sheldon Margulies. And during our break, I asked the doctor about, you know, getting girls in, interested in science. Uh, boys tend to be more interested, I think, over the years, but more and more women are becoming more interested in science. Is there any difference in fascinating education, gender-wise? No, I, I don't think so. I, uh, it, to the, I mean, that doesn't really make a difference to me. If there happens to be that more girls say, I don't get it, than boys, well, I'm... I'm out, I'm out to omit that 
expression from the English language. Uh-huh. There should be no way that he say, I don't get it, when they take my curriculum. I, I know people come to the chemistry, particularly, or science in general, with their trigger talk. They just know that it's going to be too hard. It's only for the smart kids in the class. It's just not true. And by the end of the, of the curriculum, I, I want to hear kids saying, is that it? That's all there is to it? It's that easy? And so and I think I can do that. I think I'm doing it. But I want hmm. kids to believe in themselves, you know, to believe that, that they can do something they once thought was completely out of reach. You know, I'm, I'm not interested in finding out how smart these kids are. In fact, I'm not even trying to teach them. I, I, I'm there to explain the science. And so explaining science being said, I'm on their side. I, I'm not, I, I really want them to learn, and I don't care if they all get A's. It's fine. I, I'm not there to find out how smart they are. Interesting. But don't we have to have grades? Don't we have to know that Johnny is is a C chemistry student and Brenda is an A chemistry student? Well, let me just let me just point out this. I, I have I've, I was in practice for I don't know forty fifty years whatever. I never once did a patient ever ask me when did you learn the side effects of a particular medication. The only thing they care about is that you learned it. So if some kids take a little longer to learn the material than others, it doesn't matter. Because it's what's important is that they learn it, not when they learn it. So I, I don't, I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of making kids feel bad about their abilities because every kid can learn it. And I, I, I'm not, I, just, I don't know how to say this, but I'm not interested in grades. Well, but at the same time, let's take a look at young Sheldon, uh, okay? Yes. You had good grades. You went to great schools. You had to have good grades to get into Stanford, right? And, and what, I if, mean, what if somebody else had good grades? I mean, so what's the, what's the problem? I mean, there, if somebody else has got good, good grades, I could have gone to a different medical school and I think I would have done just as well as, go, as going into Stanford. I mean, I, I met some really nice guys who were in my class, nice guys and girls who were in my class. But, um, you know, there should be some leveling. I, I, don't, I don't mind if, uh, if I, I'm not, I don't think you have to have the top, top, top all the time. I think kids can blossom later in life and uh, do quite, quite well. You mentioned in our last segment that uh, education of chemistry, for example, helps everybody. And a few weeks ago, I was doing a cooking demonstration, and the uh, the dish it was a Brazilian crepe uh, made out of tapioca flour. Okay, and it's tasteless. It just it's ugh, it's blah. But what was fascinating to me was the chemistry used to make that crepe. Because I would not have thought that it would have worked. Uh, A chef needs to know how to thicken a soup or a sauce. Uh, You mentioned a a professional uh, uh, hair uh, uh, stylist. And they need to know how to mix color chemicals so that your hair doesn't turn bright green or orange. So I understand Great. that, right? Great. So chemistry really is important to everybody. I think so. I think you know when you take just understanding the world. There's so many things that require. I mean, when you even eat a piece of bread. You know how the bread has all these little holes in it? Why are there holes? It, it's, it's as much as getting kids not just to look at the world, but to see the world and to ask, how does that happen? You, know, you ever seen a gecko climb a wall? Have you ever asked, how did you do this? How did the gecko climb a wall? I mean, right. understanding chemistry gives you, it motivates you and it gives you the, the tools to ask and answer questions about everything that's going on around you. And you can um, 
I mean, you can predict and explain and solve problems. I mean, it's just an enormous, a, a, a terrific tool. Science, all sciences. But, they, but you can go through life. I mean, you can live and, you know, have a job and stuff. But the richness of your life is so much greater when you understand the science behind it. Well, thinking that, thinking about the the gecko walking up the, the, the wall, uh, uh, we're having a, a mosquito issue here in Southern California. And I'm wondering, you know, chemically wise, and I guess biologically wise, why some people are bitten like I am, and other people don't get a bite. I mean, I, I would like to understand why, so I could maybe switch my chemistry so I don't get bit by the damn thing. Yeah, I wish I knew because my wife goes outside and she's immediately attacked, and I can go outside and I'm not attacked. Um, I don't have the answer, but I, it's only because I haven't looked for an answer. Um, but, you know, the chemicals that you spray on your body, you know, some people are, are nervous about chemicals. And right. you, you can't. You can't make a judgment about them unless you understand some of the chemistry behind them. And that's true of all things. I mean, even foods. You know, what kind of foods you eat. You're, you're eating chemistry. So right. it, it's all around us. You just it, it, It's universal. And, uh, well, and it's really so easy to understand. It's really... I've never seen a subject that's made more difficult and it's easier to understand than chemistry. We only have a couple of moments left. You were telling me the other day uh, about uh, the uh, science education. Question. Yeah, North Northwestern has, has been trying to uh, to, mo to modify and improve the way science is taught, and they've introduced um, something called the Next Generation Science Standards. Um, and I, I have read them. I, I'm, I have some difficulty understanding them. Um, so I, it's hard for me to comment on them. I can only do what I know works because I've taught, I'm telling you, I've taught over 2,000, probably over 2,500 medical students and residents. I had to make them into doctors to be let loose on the public. So I know that works. In fact, I think I mentioned that I, I actually took my curricula, biology curricula to Baltimore where at Dunbar High School, they were having trouble with the students graduating high school. Only 40% of the kids were graduating high school. And at the same because, time, I have to I have to push us along. I think you had an, uh, what was the, the final, after you taught the class, what was the, uh, the number of kids uh, passing? 87%. 87%. Oh, hey, listen, that was incredible. Uh, Sheldon, we're going to do this again. We're going to talk about other things because you're an interesting man and I really enjoy listening to you. Okay, folks, I want you to go to fascinatingeducation.com. Fascinatingeducation.com. Look around there. If you have kids or grandkids, maybe this is something you should try. You can even get a free lesson out of it. Uh, fascinatingeducation.com. Sheldon, will you come back sometime? My pleasure. All right, hold on. Uh, I'm Mark Allen, along with the insane Daryl Wayne. Don't go away. More coming up.